What's up everybody, I am Legend with Ditto Music and here is an artist guide to mixing and mastering your own music for those music producers and artists who wanna dive a bit deeper into their music production coming right up. Before we get into that, chances are you're an artist or producer who wants to get their music heard out in the world today. Well, it turns out you're in the right place because here at Ditto Music, you can release unlimited tracks to all the major streaming platforms and social media sites worldwide and maintain 100% of the royalties that you make from your streams. So if you're looking for a distributor and you wanna give Ditto Music a try, there's gonna be a link down in the description for a 30-day free trial for you to try things out yourself and see how you like it. Also, at any point in today's video, if you have any questions or comments about what we go over, be sure to leave those comments down in the comment section below and feel free to drop a like on the vid while you're there. Now let's get into the video. talk about mixing and mastering your music because these are two very important parts to the music production process that you'll want to learn if you want to up the quality of your music productions and make the best music possible. Now the first thing to note is that there is a big difference between mixing and mastering if you didn't already know that. Most beginners tend to mix the two together and think that they're one and the same, that they mean the same thing, but they actually are two separate processes in your music production. Mixing is sort of the process of making everything in your track fit together like a puzzle. So there could be different tracks, different types of instruments that you use, different vocals. And with all these different tracks and vocals and instruments, different things that are playing a role in the song, you want to get them all to play their specific part in your song, but to sound cohesive together. You're sort of trying to fit together a, a puzzle in a sense. And you're going to do this by adding different effects to these tracks, these vocals, or adjusting the volume levels, the gain, the different panning options that you have with these tracks, and even messing around with the EQ. Basically how your song is going to be mixed will be determined by what type of sound you want your song to have, or even what genre you're working in, because different genres favor different type of mixing styles and different EQ structures. Now, when it comes to mastering, you're always working with a song that's already been mixed. So this is something that comes after the mixing stage. This is the final stage of the song creation process where you're taking that mixed song and you're making those minute adjustments to the EQ, to the bass, to how punchy your song sounds to get it to sound like the songs that you hear on the radio or different artists' albums. Now first, let's check out the steps that you'll want to take when mixing a song. For step number one in your DAW, you'll want to make sure that all your tracks are properly labeled. So this is something that I struggle with because usually when I go in to record my song, I'm duplicating a lot of my vocal tracks, so it ends up being lead one, lead one copy, lead one copy two, lead one copy three. And when I try to go mix this song, and these are different vocals, they're not all leads, obviously, I don't know what I'm mixing unless I listen to that particular track. So to better organize yourself, it's more important to label each of these instrumental tracks or vocal tracks to exactly what it's going to be so that you can get a glimpse of what your song has in it. And if you hear like the saxophone is off, you can just look at saxophone and then you can turn down the saxophone or mess with the panning there. Or if you have a certain amount of stacked vocals, you can look at stacked vocals and adjust those there. Instead of having to go through your song and listen to each of the instrumental tracks or vocal tracks that you have to determine or find where those tracks are that you have problems with. For step number two, I like to do some basic balancing of all my tracks, which is what we call gain staging, where we adjust the volumes and the gain levels of our tracks to nicely fit together. Now remember that this doesn't always mean that everything is at the exact same volume. In fact, this is quite the opposite. When it comes to your song, there may be some vocals that you do want to have all at the same volume, especially if you're doing stacked vocals and harmonies of certain parts. But more often than not, you're going to have some tracks that fit better when they're sitting in the background or some tracks that sound better when they're more in the forefront. And this is when I usually like to say that each track is serving their purpose in the song because some are not supposed to be outshining others and some are supposed to be kind of more timid in the background. Some are supposed to be panned to the left or panned to the right or coming straight down the middle in the mix. It depends entirely on your taste, but also it depends on how harsh or how soft those vocals or instruments are coming off in the initial recording of your song. So if you have some that are a little bit too harsh, then you wanna maybe back those off a little bit. If you have some vocals that you recorded that are maybe too quiet or too soft, but they are perfectly recorded and you don't wanna redo them, then of course you would wanna boost the levels of those. And this is why it's very important to use your ears when you're mixing your song, because this is going to be one of the greatest things that's going to help you in your music production. 
So you can't always base your track off of what you see and what you're looking at. Sometimes, or most times, because it's music, we're listening to the song. So listen to how it sounds, and if something sounds off or doesn't sound right, then you wanna make those adjustments accordingly. So step number three is where you want to start cleaning up the sound of your tracks. And by this, I mean if there are any unfavorable sounds in the background of your recordings, if you're recording in a room where there's people talking, maybe you're in your bedroom and you hear the dog or police sirens in the background, uh, the air conditioning's going, this is where you want to take care of those sounds. And sometimes you can just take care of that by deleting those chunks of audio in between the parts where you're not singing, where there's like that, you know, flat line of the, the waveform. You can also use a noise gate that'll automatically duck the audio of your vocal track. And this makes it so that you don't have to go through every single track and chop out those sections because that can be a bit tedious. And almost every DAW does have a noise gate, if not every DAW. But also there are some plugins out there that are really precise in eliminating these different, you know, things that you don't want in your song, like Isotopes RX-10. But that's if you're really trying to be surgical with your cleaning. Most people, you know, I'm one of them. I just like to take the simple approach and slap on a noise gate because, you know, for me, the creation process is the most important and I just want to be super fast and super streamlined. Also, when you're cleaning up your track, this can be where you're starting to adjust the EQ curves of your vocal tracks or your instrumental tracks. Maybe your microphone has some characteristics that you want to trim or boost up even. And the same thing can go for your instrumentation. Maybe there are some elements of your instruments that you want to cut out or boost up. So this is where you would go into your EQ that's built into your DAW. Mostly every DAW has an EQ. And you would then choose to cut certain frequencies or boost certain frequencies. The frequencies that you choose to cut or boost depend entirely on your taste and also on what you're hearing in your song and what you want to cut out or boost up. But it's as simple as applying an EQ curve and simply dragging up or down that EQ. What I would say is as you're doing it, just listen to how the song sounds and kind of mess around with the frequency range because I'm one person who goes by the sound every single time. You know, some people will preach, you wanna do this frequency hertz, you wanna do that frequency hertz and they'll get into the nitty gritty of all that stuff and that's good to know. But I'm somebody who chooses to listen rather than to go with a set number because I just wanna know is what I'm listening to how I want it to sound. So I'll put the EQ curve in there, I'll drag it all the way across the EQ spectrum, and I'll see what it's affecting in that particular track. And then if I like it, I'll drag it up. If I don't like it, I'll drag it down, or I'll leave it by itself. For me, it's all intuitive, and I think maybe for some of you, it might be as well. So I would say try that out, but if you do want to dive a little bit further deep into the EQ stuff, there are plenty of videos on YouTube that will help you do that. So you'll want to do this EQ and cleaning up your vocal tracks to each of your tracks in your song, each and every one of them. And then once you're done with that, we can move on to step number four. And that's where we're starting to use effects to give us a more creative mix and add a bit of space to our song. The most common tools I'm sure you've heard of would be reverbs, delays, chorus, and things like that but you can also choose to add grit with distortion or saturation plugins. Or maybe you want some trippy movement effects with a phaser or a flanger. Whatever you feel like is appropriate to add to your song to give it more character that is appropriate for that style of song, you would choose to add it. Now, once you've experimented with your song and you figured out where you wanted to add these different effects, how you wanted to clean the song, how you wanted to EQ the song, it's time to move on to finally the mastering process. Now, this process has three main goals, and that is number one, to improve the volume of your song, number two, to make the overall track sound better, and number three, to ensure your song sounds good on all sound systems, from your phone, to your computer, to your desktop, to your car, everywhere. And there are multiple ways to focusing on the master of your song. So one way could be if you're working on a full project, a full album, you're trying to get your song to sound like the rest of the songs on the project, to have a cohesive sounding project. That way every single song doesn't have a different volume level or a different mastering style or it just is jumping all over the place. The second way is to master your song if you're releasing singles and you're just trying to get that song to pop and sound as good as it possibly can in and of itself. Because let's say you're somebody who's releasing singles, you know, like Russ, you're you're dropping a bunch of singles on social media platforms. You know, you're not gonna try to listen to a conglomerate of songs all at the same time to make sure everything sounds cohesive. You're just working on one song at a time. So the focus here is to get it to have an industrial volume and sound. Now the absolute best approach to mastering your song would be to send your song to a mastering engineer who knows what they're doing with your music and is very technical. 
because these people know how to get your song to sound professional on a wide range of platforms with the tools that they have and the knowledge that they have in mastering your music. Although there are plugins these days that are out that can help you master your own songs by yourself that aren't too complicated to use. Some of them are, but some of them can be pretty simple. I've personally found as somebody who is a do-it-yourself artist and I choose to master all my own stuff, is as long as you dedicate the time to learning how the plugins work, you can truly figure out how to master a song yourself, even if it's not going to be the top of the line, you know, as good as a mastering engineer would do, it's still good enough for release. And especially if it's a simpler plugin that makes the process easier for you, I find that these kind of plugins are the best to use if you're trying to master your own music. And it'll also help you save money too. So whether you tackle the task of mastering yourself or you hire somebody to do it for you, all that matters is that the song comes out the way that you envisioned it. I will say, however, either way you choose to do it, it is a good idea to get a basic knowledge of these processes yourself so that you can better communicate to your mixing or mastering engineer when you're trying to get your song mixed and mastered. So I hope this video was helpful to you in understanding the differences between mixing and mastering and how to go about getting either or done. Again, if you have any questions or comments about today's video, leave them down in the comment section below. And be sure to check out Ditto Music's free trial and distribution to see how it could work out for you and your music career. Thank you guys for watching and as always, stay legendary.